Sunday 14 November is Cultural Treasures Day at the University of Melbourne. Between 10am and 4pm, most of the university's cultural collections and museums will be open. Most of the public don't know that we've got 31 galleries and museums here at the university, collections of all kinds. We've got Ned Kelly's death mask, we've got botanical specimens collected on the Endeavour on Captain Cook's voyages. There's an astonishing array of things here which the public mostly doesn't see. So this is the one day of the year when we throw them all open on a Sunday so people can come and share them with us. The University's Ian Potter Museum of Art is the major exhibition space and visitor centre for the University's art and classics collections. A lot of our current exhibitions are objects from the University Art Collection with strong associations to the University's history. And the Leckie window behind me is a classic example. It was installed in the old Wilson Hall in 1934 and tragically the whole hall burnt down in 1952. And that is the only surviving remnant of the ceremonial hall of the university. This is the Medical History Museum, which is one of three museums uh, within the Faculty of Medicine, Dentistry and Health Sciences. The museum's been here since 1967. And our current exhibition is called The Physic Garden, Aspects of the Apothecary's World from the Collections of the University. And not only does it show wonderful ceramic drug jars from our collection, but then we've also borrowed from five collections around the university, including the Bailey Library's print collection and um, the rare books. And there's some wonderful things from all over the university campus. One of the more gruesome collections is housed in the Henry Foreman Atkinson Dental Museum, showcasing the development of dentistry from its rather grisly origins. Professor Atkinson came to Melbourne to oversee dental training in the 1950s and is now honorary curator of the museum. It was started in 1884 by the early dentists through the Odontological Society and they made a, a collection and started it which went through various um, phases. Uh, when student numbers increased, the space occupied by the museum had to be taken over and so on. It was in and out of storage over its life of over 125 years, five times, packed and uh, unpacked. And we hope that um, this may be getting near the last time until we move into larger premises. The University of Melbourne Herbarium is, one of, is the largest Australian university herbarium. We've got about 100,000 specimens and they're collected back from the Banks and Solander ex expedition. A lot of them are more recent collections and because we're a university herbarium it's really important for research and teaching, a lot of the teaching things. We have a volunteer program and they um, come and do a lot of the curation of the specimens. The Granger Museum uh, has recently opened after about seven years of being closed to the public. We've now opened with a much extended display space with totally redesigned exhibitions, totally reinterpreted Granger stories. This is a very object rich museum. There's quite a lot to see, a lot to do. Cultural Treasures Day has special outdoor tours of the university's grounds, paying special attention to architecture and outdoor art. And there are special mystery tours for families with kids. A free concert in Melbourne Hall featuring the Consort of Melbourne performing choral music of Percy Granger, followed by afternoon tea, is the finale to the festive day. Oh